so far we have uh, done all this thing so this was just you can say a review on the electric displacement and now we are set towards electrodynamics so let's go towards electrodynamics and I will assume that you are aware of the concept of EMF which is not a force but a potential and the lens law so I can write that the EMF the EMF is written like with a varying epsilon and this is defined as minus d phi by dt what is this phi? phi is the flux flux of what? of the magnetic field if I will be changing the flux of the magnetic field to a certain area it will cause some electromotive force it will cause some potential and this phi b is equal to close loop integral of close surface integral of d dot d a this we call the magnetic flux the flux of magnetic field lines okay we are also aware of the fact that the Lorentz force which is equal to QE plus QB cross D. We know that the electric component of the force is actually moving the charged particle translation, right? It is producing translation movement in the charged particle in a line while V cross B which is the magnetic force QV cross B is the magnetic force it cannot move the charged particle but it will be rotating the charged particle cross product is there now here this one is a straightforward but this one is a bit complicated if charge will be there but if charge is at rest then magnetic force will be zero on this if charge is there velocity or speed of the particle is there magnetic field is there yet the force can be zero if the angle between these two is the same is zero then the force again will be equal to zero so for the particle to have maximum magnetic force it should move perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field if magnetic field normally we take the z direction so if the particle is moving in a horizontal line then it will experience maximum force and it will be rotated so this force we will utilize a little bit when we move further here now you are aware of the fact that <coughs> Faraday did some experiments three of the experiments they are here quoted by DJ Griffiths and one of the experiments was that he uh, look, this is the Faraday's. No, our uh, Faraday's equation. Are uh, we call another thing? This one is electro magnetic induction. Now you see here things are changing a little bit. From electricity and magnetism, we are moving toward electromagnetic. So the electric and the magnetic are now combined. And after this, we will move even to 
electrodynamics and there I will explain you how the name converted there. So what were the experiments of Faraday's? They were like here. You are having a magnetic field B in this region. And this field is, you consider that this field is going into the void. You know that why we put the dot and the cross symbol. It's just like an arrow. If the arrow is coming toward you, you are seeing the tip of it. And that one is out of the board. And if the arrow is going away from you, then you are seeing the cross of that arrow. So that's why cross symbol is there. Means it is going away from me and going into the board. And in this one, he considered, uh, let me mark this one with a different color. A loop. And this loop was like this. And connected to some load here. The load may be above LED or something, but there is some load. And what he did, he moved this one, the load, in this region. And he found that some current flowed in this loop. Right. In the second experiment, this was one experiment he did. He moved the loop. And as he moved the loop, he found that there was some deflection of the galvanometer, means some current flowed in this wire. You know that current can only flow when you connect it to a battery, when you connect it to a source. Here is no source. But as he moved it, galvanometer deflected, means there was some current in this loop. In the second experiment, the loop was stationary, but he moved the magnetic region in this direction. So in the next experiment, what Faraday did, that he moved the field this way. And surprisingly, he observed current again. Source is not there and current is there. So he was surprised by this. And he then performed the third experiment. And the third experiment was, loop was stationary, the magnetic field region was stationary, he increased the magnetic field and he observed that the same current flowed again here. So what was the responsible thing for all this? Right? What is actually happening here? Now look here. There are, you know, in a conductor there are charges, but their net motion is zero. They go here, there, there. When you connect it to source, then they will go in one direction. Now the charges are there. So consider some charges here. And as I move this loop, then those charges actually experience some force from where their force is coming in. You know from the Lorentz force here that whenever you move a charged particle in the presence of magnetic field, you move. It is I that I am moving. So it will experience a magnetic force. So it means the current which was here was actually the magnetic force. The responsible thing here was the magnetic force which actually produced current here. Got it? So the first thing is the magnetic force. 
whether the second thing is the magnetic force no it's not a magnetic force because charges are stationary there I'm moving the region of magnetic field so I'm not moving the charges so magnetic force is zero there V is zero charges are at rest so it's not a magnetic force this is something else right this is something else while in the third situation not only the loop is stationary but also the range or the region of magnetic field is stationary and I increase the magnetic field and current flows so whether the two and three experiment they are due to one kind of you can say reason or there are different reasons for that as well the first one is clear charge was stationary so it was having no magnetic force we know from here from the large force law v0 no magnetic force so force is not there charges are not moving but you move the charge you move it in that field and it experience maximum magnetic force because the magnetic field is into the boat and you drag it horizontally so maximum force was experienced by those charges and they moved inside the wire that is clear but whether the first the second and the third experiment they are also having the same reasons we will have to check this thing that what caused actually those two reasons those two movements charge has been moved inside the conductor but who has moved the charge you are getting the question loop is stationary in the experiment 2 and the experiment 3 so who is responsible for moving those charges we will have to work it out okay one thing we are really clear that magnetic force cannot move a charge particle and not suppose we said this thing when a charge is moved it is to be moved by the electric field either it will be mechanical like in the first experiment I did but in the second and third charges are stationary so the experiment 2 and 3 if I say that charges have been moved charges moved current generated who moved the charges magnetic field cannot so there is no other field except electric field but from where the electric field came in there is no electric field here it's magnetic field so from here the intuition comes in that if you what we are actually doing here some portion of the loop is inside the magnetic field right so some flux is there when we move the, the magnetic field this way the region where magnetic field exists we move it this way the flux here is changing with time when the flux changes with time potential is generated electric field is induced so we say that a varying magnetic flux or a varying magnetic field will generate electric field right charges can only be moved by the electric field magnetic field cannot move a stationary charge so electric field is induced there clear so experiment 2 is clarified it is the magnetic field change 
causes induction of the electric field. What about experiment 3? What we are doing in experiment 3? In experiment 3, we are actually not producing the change in the magnetic flux by the the motion force. We are producing it by increasing the magnetic field. So it means experiment 2 and experiment 3 are having the same reasons. Change of magnetic flux. Change of magnetic flux, potential is generated. Then potential is actually the negative gradient of the potential will be electric field. So we are, you can say, ready to say that the EMF which I came in, uh, which I wrote is minus d over dt of phi b the magnetic flux is also equal EMF the potential earlier how I wrote it you remember I wrote it a line of closed loop integral E dot dm. So it is the same potential which was earlier I denoted by V and now I denote by E, the EMF. So it's the same potential and this is equal to E dot dm. Now from here I can write that E dot dl is equal to minus d phi b by dt. I can write minus d over dt and phi b I can write is v dot da. This is v dot da. So if I remove this one inside the integral then it will become a partial derivative. So I can write E dot dl is equal to minus curly B over curly T dot B A. And it's a closed loop integral. And now I can apply the Stokes theorem, the curl theorem on this one. And what's the curl theorem is? You take the curl of any physical quantity dot dA, it will be equal to the line integral around the closed loop of that quantity directly E dot dx. 